Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining the Berta Talk Show. Today we are going to be eating BLT, bacon, lettuce, tomatoes. It's a classic breakfast meal that I grew up on. If you're from New York, I'm sure everybody else do it, but New Yorkers, bacon, egg, egg and cheese, and big, um, BLT is like the classic corner store meal that you get before you get to school or you go to school, right? I made the bread myself. I made the mayo myself, really not hard at all it's really simple and everything else obviously was tomatoes and we are going to be having with tea okay this is a regular black tea with milk and sugar you know we were colonized by the British so we do our tea with milk and sugar so it is what it is okay and let's perfect Let's get started. Bro, I took the train last week and the Metro car went up. I'm usually driving. So I was like, wait, 290? Was it 290 or 295? I think it was 290. At this point, you better be walking. Gas went up, everything just went up, okay? Because I guess people are not buying too much or and we are paying for it. It's, it's such a capitalist country that even when you try to save money, you still have to pay for that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, with the same amount of money, let's say you spent $200 on groceries, you get less great groceries than you used to get, right? And you know the crazy thing is? Because we shop at Whole Foods. Whole Foods will say, that, oh, new lower prices, blah, blah, blah. Real talk, I be looking to see what the lower prices is or where the increase is because I'm not, I don't notice a difference, but I know that by the time I get to the register, it's more than we budgeted for, right? And I be so confused because sometimes those little cents make a big difference. It really adds up, right? Like I noticed that our eggs went up. Remember that when eggs was $12 and $11 and some craziness? So our eggs used to be $7.99 and now it's $9.99. I'm the baby, no. We're gonna find a different brand, all right? As long as it's pasture raised, I'm okay because that's just crazy. Especially if you buy two, that's $20 on eggs. That's $20 on a carton of eggs. That's a little, that's bruh. That is crazy. I remember went to Costco with my dad uh, not too long ago. You know the little reusable grocery bag? We probably got, I had half a bag. I know they said Costco is cheaper, whatever. It is, because you get more bang for your buck. Like the same $15, $12 you spent, at a regular grocery store for a small amount of items, you get more. Got it. It was half of that bag. I get to register. Sister girl finished scanning. He's like, $110. I'm like, come again? $110. I said, for what? I literally bought seven pieces of items. $10, $9.99, $12, $15. That baby added up so quick. To, I was so confused. I said, like, I cannot believe this is 100. And then my bag is not even full. I'm just like, nah, inflation is too real. Like, what the heck, right? That's 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 where we notice inflation the most. Groceries, gas, not necessarily clothing or fashion, because I felt like we actually really have more than we need, if you really think about it. And there are always a sale. There's always a sale when it comes to fashion and most of the time when we're buying a lot of times we don't need it we just want it because when you look at the basics of life you need shelter you need food you need some clothes on your back and shoes on your feet well that's part of clothing and that's all you really need so fashion you don't really see inflation like that and if it's inflated that much i'm just not buying it like I'm just not. What causes inflation is the value of your money dropping. The value of the dollar, I don't know if you guys know, but over the past couple of years, the value of the dollar have dropped, okay? It's not heavy like it used to be. Inflation is also caused by when we are lending out money to different countries and for, you know, and we lending out money, we giving out money like that joint, like there's no tomorrow to all these wars and all that stuff. But once again, that's a conversation for another day. That also causes inflation. The check that we all got, all of America, every single person got, that also caused the inflation because we're giving out the money to the citizens and they have to raise the prices. They have to raise the prices to basically get their money back, all right? America is was and is going to get their money back for that them checks that we got, point blank, period. If you thought that that money was free, <laughs> there's no free money anywhere, okay? If you thought that money was free, you was playing yourself because they were going to get that money back regardless, okay? Whether through raising gas prices, remember gas prices, is, it's just not going down. As recent as just yesterday, everything was starting to level out. However, the prices for food is still high. 
And it makes me wonder, are companies like, look, man, they were going, they're going, they going to have to eat. They will spend the money regardless of how much it was to eat. So they just keep it at that price. If you're that company and watching this, I'm probably not ever going to be watching this. But have some love in your heart, okay? Have some humanity in you and bring it back, back down. Like, come on. Like, and it makes it so difficult for people to he eat healthy because it's like, it's so expensive. Fruits, let me tell you something. And I love Whole Foods, don't get me wrong. Whole Foods is not as bad as you think it is. Because I'll tell you this, when we first got married, we tried different grocery store, Target, Stop and Shop, Trader Joe's. And one thing we realized, like, for instance, Trader Joe's. I like Trader Joe's. I like Trader Joe's if you're single. I like Trader Joe's if you don't eat that much, okay? But with Trader Joe's, it's cheap than whole food but the quality the quantity is smaller so in order to feed the whole family you have to buy multiple packs of things so when you do when you do multiple pack of, packs of things by the time you do the math you either pay the same amount as whole foods or you pay a little bit more so it kind of don't make any sense and what we caught ourselves doing is weekly we were going to trade Joe's to pick up who we was doing grocery shopping every week and no one had time for that okay we really don't have time to be doing all that we just recently did grocery shopping this week. I was so hungry, okay? I was picking up coconuts, a bunch of stuff that we did not need, but I was so hungry, so I was just picking it up because my eyes are just like, please feed me. So first tip, do not go grocery shopping on an empty stomach. Grab a bite, eat a sandwich, before, because that's when you are logical. You have some logic and just like, all right, I'm going and I'm buying what's on my list. Know what you're cooking before you do groceries. You will list out all the ingredients that you need. So when you do grocery shopping, let's say we do grocery sh grocery shopping every two weeks. If I have an idea of like, okay, this week I'll make spaghetti and this. The next week I'm going to make chicken and that. When, and I know my ingredients. I, ha I know the ingredients that go into each dish. When I do grocery shopping, I am buying those ingredients. Nothing extra, just the things that I need. You know that you're going to go to the grocery store and you're not going to pick up just the lemon. You're going to pick up the lemon, you're going to pick up cheese, you're going to see things are on sale, so you're going to pick that up too. You already have your list of ingredients, so there's no need for you to go back into a grocery store midweek to pick up something because you got everything that you need in your fridge. When you buy something like herbs or certain um, vegetables, you know that it goes back quick. If I buy um, cilantro or parsley, I put it, because I usually do my cilantro and parsley like this, where I put cold water, I put it, uh, cold water in a jar, mason jar, whatever, I put it in the fridge and I put the cilantro parsley in the fridge. That keeps it going for a good two weeks because herbs go by bad quick. My friend just told me about scallions. I'm trying not to see how long I could keep it for because I caught myself always throwing um, cilantro out because it go bad quicker than parsley. I'm always throwing out cilantro because it went bad like within a week and it's, it was so annoying. Same thing with avocado. I'm just getting all these thoughts. Same thing with avocado. How to keep your avocado longer when you bring it home, put it in the fridge. I had my avocado three weeks now, and it's fresh as the day I bought it. Cook more at home, duh. Cook more at home, you save more money. Point blank, period. Last week, I was craving sushi. I was craving sushi for like two weeks. So I'm like, oh, let me just spoil myself and get some sushi, because we don't really eat out that much. One, is not healthy all the time, because I don't know what y'all put in the food. And two, is money wasting, right? It was like two rolls. My husband got one roll of, I forget what. I got out of mommy for the baby and it was $50. That might not sound like a lot, but for me and my house, that's a lot for people who don't really eat that much. And I was crying on the inside. I had to kind of talk, talk, talk myself out of it, like, girl, you don't even do this that often, so you'll be all right, like, relax. But I was crying on the inside, because I was calculating, dang, $50, that kind of got me half my produce at Whole Foods. Pears and my apples, my beets. $50 could have taken me so far in the grocery store that that little bit of sushi that I ate. So I'm just like, yo, People do this every single day. That's crazy. Granted, you might spend that same $50 at the grocery store, but you can eat it for multiple days as compared to one night. For instance, this sandwich, this sandwich would probably cost me almost $5. With three cups of flour, bread flour, I can make a loaf that will last me a couple of days for me and my family. And with that $20, I could only buy four of these. So only four days, right? Where with that $20, I could make this for two weeks. That's the difference. 
So yes, you might spend the same amount, but it's going to last you longer. And I'm not, I'm not saying don't spoil yourself and don't go out to you once in the blue. I'm down for that because you work hard. If you work hard, enjoy life, you know, because if COVID haven't taught us anything, you be, you could be going tomorrow. So enjoy your life. So I'm not saying to be, uh, be cheap or don't, uh, don't spoil yourself or don't enjoy life. No, but it's time to be frugal sensibly, right? Enjoy your life, but be smart with how you spend your money, especially if, with the way things are going. Be smart how you spend your money, okay? Another tip I have is get yourself a mini freezer. Growing up in an African household, some Caribbeans do it too. There's always freezer in the house. And I keep talking about food because that's where a lot of our money goes. Food and rent. Food and rent. That's a necessity for life. So I'm, I'm going to always go back to that. Food and shelter, sorry. So my parents used to do a thing where they would buy a box of fish. Frozen, but cheaper. You go to a fish market, some, not everybody does it, but some fish market you could go and say, I want a box of fish. It's going to be like the $80. Now it went up, depending on what kind of fish you have, 60 to $80 to $100 for big pieces of fish that could last you for months. We used to buy redfish, red snapper, big pieces, buy a whole box for a buck and it will last us about six months, right? So my parents, whenever there is a sale on the meats they eat or vegetables, whatever, they buy a whole bunch and throw it in the freezer. So the last thing I want to mention is stop impulse buying. I've said this in my first video, just because it's on sale, my husband will say, I'll be like, babe, babe, it was on sale. He's like, yeah, but you still spent your money. So you did not gain anything. They gained, you lost. Cause you spent money you wasn't going to give them, but you gave it to them because it was on sale. So you lost. I was like, dang, I never thought about it like that. I make a list of all the things that I like. When I'm making a purchase or want to buy something, I'm thinking about my list. Now look, is this still on my list? No, it's not. So you're not getting it. Two days ago, you know, I'm boycotting Zara. I'm trying my best not to buy much from them. I was on there, couldn't sleep, so I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. That's how you get it got. Go to sleep. Get off them websites, okay? They're gonna make you spend your money. Especially now with this Apple Pay, they make it so easy. They had this nice wool, wool, it was like wool and, it's wool or something, on sale for like $13. I'm like, oh, this is so nice. It's not that bad, it's so on $13, it's so on $13. And I was just like, all right, let me get the baby a nice set. Does he need it? No, but I was like, let me get him a nice set. To not feel so guilty about, about getting the sweater. I said, at least if I'm here, let me get something for him too, so I can say, oh, I was there to get something for him. It's all mind games, right? After I added his set, um, outfit and that sweater after shipping like $30. So you go from $13 to $30. That's a big jump, right? I didn't get it. The next day, what did I have to buy? I had to buy his milk. I bought, I bought multiple of those milk and that added up to $30. I'm like, wow. That $30 I could have spent on something that I didn't need, I was able to get his milk for that same amount of money. So I also say that at that moment, it might sound like, oh, it's not that much money. It's not that big of a deal, $30. What's the $30? Da -da -da. But you, know, you see what you could do with that same $30. To, uh, and put it towards something that's actually important and beneficial, you realize that no, 30, that $30 is not just, it's not little anymore. We are supposed to leave something behind so the next generation that come after us are not struggling to start life, are not struggling through life because there's no foundation built for them. A lot of parents do that. Oh, you're gonna figure, no, they're not they're struggling because you did not leave them a home, you did not leave them a business, you did not leave them a good foundation for them to say, oh, okay, my parents, my mother, my father left me a good foundation, no. So me starting off life, it's like, boom, I got this. A lot of people my age and younger have to start from scratch because nobody left nothing behind for them to do it because we are selfish. You have to think beyond you. You have to think about your legacy. You have to think about the generation after you. If you think, oh yeah, and honestly, no shade, leaving your child a Louis Vuitton bag is not what I'm talking about. Like, that's cute. They might be able to flip it and get some money back, but we talking about real things that actually matter, like a home, like a, a business or like a land that's what we we're talking about in terms of leaving something behind so the kids can start off life not struggling you get what i'm saying and right now save me your money be smart and wise on how you spend your money it's part of it god forbid something happens to you because tomorrow's not promised you at least have some money for your children to start off life with that's my advice to you those are tips those are things that i do in my house some things i need to get better doing better at doing um, and I hope that this video is helpful and I cannot wait to have the next conversation with y'all. All right. You guys have a blessed week and stay safe. All right. Bye.